Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. As always, guys, please do make sure you're subscribed to all three channels. Have that little bell clicked and check in daily. So here we go. We have the U.S. government stepping in to shore up deposits at Silicon Valley Bank. And another failed institution. Another? Yes. Look, look at this tweet. This kind of says it all. Get ready. The global financial system is about to crash harder than the triple. Uh-oh. I didn't say it. He said it. <laughs> he said it. He did. He did. Boosted. Oh, she said it. So we can see here, regulators close New York's signature bank, citing systemic risk. One, two, three. Okay. Next one will be number four. Yeah. Uh, yeah, number four. So basically, you see this, the U.S. Department of the Treasury Office of Public Affairs. The question is here is, did the FDI insurance for depositors just become unlimited? Remember, 250000 that limit. As it doesn't, well, it, the language doesn't hold to that. It just says, don't worry, we got your back. Well, <laughs> we got your back, really. Uh, it, it, the the rest of the taxpayers got your back, you know. It it this is how it it rolls. Think about this. We don't get to okay anything in this world. We really don't okay. We don't all of a sudden all vote. What do we do? You guys, let's take a vote. I mean, couldn't we vote? I'm sure we could, but would it count? You know, to me, I think voting is one of the absolute biggest illusions that there is. And I, I've seen some people that I thought were really awake and yet they're talking about how important it is that their vote matters and it counts. And I'm like, no, no, that's the first veil. Ah, yes. So again, all these decisions are made by entities that are definitely above the law. And again, your taxpayers, you, the taxpayers' money, we have no say in it is the bottom line. We truly don't. As Silicon Valley Bank deletes Twitter, YouTube videos, and Scrubs website. Wow, that just sounds like somebody that had an o illegal operation going, trying to just kind of like, you know, get rid of all the tracks and traces. And, you know, so the question is, you know, how bad is it going to get? And yet they're still running into this country, crossing the border and running into this country from Mexico. An estimated 1,000 illegal migrants just rushed at the port of entry into El Paso, Texas. Wow. Yeah, you got a question. With all the chaos going on right up here, why are they coming in? Seriously. Don't they know what's going on north of the border? Yeah, you know, when you look at that, you look at all the signs. You know, this statement is basically the president of Mexico speaking about persuading people to vote a certain way. Gosh, all we've ever heard last, you know, more than four years has been about, uh, you know, different outside forces, you know, finagling with the election process. And when you also see Mexico asking to join Russia and China and the rest of the BRICS nations in the alliance, you understand, too, that this alliance is going to end up being economic and military. Okay, so a military economic alliance, and you just had a thousand people cross the border today in one fell swoop. There's millions inside the country. Well, it, 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 it kind of becomes a little bit more obvious, doesn't it? Think about what was done to Venezuela. The people suffered so bad. The economic situation from the sanctions that were put on them Again, it's the average person that suffers. And truly, the average person has no say in any of this. They were basically pulling cows out of farm pastures and slaughtering them and bringing home a leg for food. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was that bad economically in that country. 
And here you have Venezuelan President Maduro. Write it down, date and time. The U.S. empire is in a phase of historical decline. We must continue helping to bring forth the historical birth of a multipolar world, multicentric world, a new world of a common destiny for mankind, as President Xi Jinping says. I wonder whose side he's on. Maduro must not be falling for Predator Biden's gaslighting about how great America is doing, you know. Um, no, no. And and this is exactly what we were saying in just a video, I think a day or two ago. We were saying, think about all those countries militarily the U.S. has been in. 2017, the U.S. was in over 90% of the countries in this entire world. Militarily, military bases, military presence. That's an empire. Well, the empire is crumbling. The empire is falling apart on purpose, completely on purpose and absolutely from within as well as without. And that day of reckoning is, is nearing. And those that have been downtrodden by the U.S. and NATO are relishing this. This is exactly what they've been, well, what they've been given as inspiration Really, it's it's going to be all about revenge because of the suffering that they've had on the American people who indirectly, you know, again, are not really truly responsible besides maybe our own negligence or not caring enough when things were happening that maybe felt a little icky somewhere else. Maybe we should have spoke up a little bit more. But then again, we don't really have a say in things, do we? That's the thing that's being revealed in this apocalypse, which that we never really truly had to say. This is uh, the things that are going to happen and are happening, are happening in spite of what the masses want. There's really no vote on. Do you want to bail this bank out? Do you do you want to sanction? Do you do you want to sanction the Venezuelan people? Do you want to sanction any other countries? No, no, no. They make all the calls. We have no say in it, but then again, the other people of the other countries of the world are just waiting to watch for the fall. And, you know, again, it reminds me of that Babylon the Great burning in the distance. Mm -hmm. I know. And, and we need more people to wake up to this, to the understanding that where is our word in it? You know, where, where can we speak the loudest? And when we or feeling like we don't have any control, we need to look around and see what things can we control because we don't want to be controlled by them. And they're looking to take the food and take anything and everything we might need to sustain life and they want to control it. So we have to prepare ourselves, be ready for that. And that way we're not falling victim to their dictation. I mean, oh, home of the brave, land of the free. Really? Really? You know, it's just, it's getting to be more and more murky out there. Well, again, too many have been too complacent for too long, and now it's going to reverse course, and it's going to hit us straight in the face. And, and again, so many people haven't really seen the writing on the wall or understood what's really going on. And we can talk about and we have talked about what was done to Native Americans as the European colonization came over, kicked people off their land, didn't even seem like, you know, they counted them as humans in many cases. Oh, Columbus discovered America. Yeah, but what about all the tens of millions, hundreds of millions of people that were right here? You know, it again, it's just ridiculous when you really look at it that way. And how could we uh, have been so negligent for so long? and not understanding what was being done around the world in our name when the average person really had no part of it. And yet there's going to be people around the world thrilled and cheering as the great Satan goes down. But yet again, it's always picking one, one particular group of people to rise to the top, to overthrow another group, and the cycle goes on forever. So we were talking about the Native Americans, and then I'm reading more and more, and I've been familiar with this concept for decades, but the mound builders, you know, the mound builders here in the U.S., that culture, 
was wiped out by the Native Americans. The Native Americans wiped out the mound builders. Then the Native Americans get wiped out and shoveled out to small little reservations by the Europeans. Now, you know, it's going to happen again. And this time it'll be the Chinese and the Russians and some others coming in. It just goes on for infinity. And until we recognize that we're all being played against each other, it, it the cycle just continues. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the most important things also to recognize is that they pit us against each other. You know, if one person is maybe doing something and um, depending on where you're at or what your opinion is, you might jump on that person or kind of get after that person because maybe they kind of questioned your belief system or maybe they made you a little uncomfortable. But we really should not do that. Be very careful before we jump on or or nag at someone or make them feel like they are wrong because we are all traumatized to a very deep level. Narcissism is a very, very important thing and it's about having an extreme imbalance, but it's this is the type of relationship that we are in with this country. It's a very narcissistic relationship. And when you are in fear, when you're in constant fear, that cortisol pumps through your body and it pumps and pumps and pumps and after a while it really starts to deteriorate your your brain and it can make you feel very fearful and that reptilian part of your brain is always on it's always lifted and you're always looking for the next shoe to drop and this is what's been done to us so really we all need to be very kind to each other and just know that all of us we're all kind of in the same boat with very naughty parents (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good way to put it there. Yeah, absolutely. The control system has been very naughty. Yes. And this is Governor Kevin Stitt of Oklahoma. Late yesterday, I was made aware that toxic, a shipment of toxic waste from the derailment East Palestine, Ohio, is coming to Oklahoma. Immediately, he worked with his team and got the shipment stopped from coming into the state. Again, you know, they like to spread the toxicity around and... You know, we were talking about the red tide and there's in Florida with that type of toxicity. And then there's other uh, toxic algal outbursts that come in Florida, unfortunately, far too regularly just from corporate runoff. Uh, You know, again, it's just ridiculous what we see going on out in this planet. It's it's so anti-life. And here you see from a radar-based perspective, this may be the most structurally classic supercell thunderstorm I've ever seen in California. Wow. Watch out, Southern Fresno Metro. Yeah, there was an actual tornado. And, uh, of course, we have the snow, and we have more snow and rain coming and massive flooding. And, you know, then it just feels like we're getting into that zone where, you know, we might be seeing a mega quake. Now, this wasn't an earthquake. This is in in Valinda, California. Well, a 48-hour standoff is finally going to be wrapped up or starting to be wrapped up. Look at the damage in the roof. This, this This is from gunfire. Isn't that incredible? The insus- the suspect's been barreled, uh, barricaded in SWAT team. Look at that damage. Wow. That is definitely scary. And uh, this marathon standoff, it continues 24 plus hours after authorities first responded. But now they say it, it's about to be wrapped up. He was barricaded in. Insane, guys. In insane. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just give you guys this since we started to go on to that topic. L- you know, you might look at this and say, wow, where are they? Are they in Mexico? Where are they? What is this? Now, we're going to do a little more research into this as we've bought a whole bunch of books delving deep into the giants and the mound builders. This is from 1880. This is from Wisconsin. You know, again, when we look into the Native American legends, when they got here, there was a race of giants here. And there was more than one, well, I should say there were multiple races of giants 
and there were red-headed giants and there were dark-haired uh, giants, but all of them had uh, basically Caucasian type features. Now, obviously it makes just, well, makes a lot of people, me right away, think of Atlantis. I mean, were these again people from Atlantis and part of Atlantis? What we have felt driving through the American Southwest, uh, you know, Cindy and I have, have seen ourselves a lot of mud fossils. We've seen a bunch of mud fossils firsthand, put our, fa our hands on them, touched them, and, and gotten impressions of, you know, battles that are almost beyond belief. And sometimes that's really difficult because you feel that energy. It's like it comes back to you. It can give you a good wallop sometimes. Um, our, our abilities really are strengthening. And I think that's another reason why we're being hammered so hard by the control system, because they really don't want us to have our eye on the prize. They don't want us to realize that our abilities are creeping out. They want to keep us in a state of fear. And the more sensitive you are, the more difficult it's going to be to keep up with the day-to-day -day life that's been created for us since we were little children. So no matter what goes on, make sure you're always going within at least once a day. Take some deep breaths. Give yourself a little bit of time. 60 seconds, 5 minutes, whatever it is. Do not lose your focus that you are becoming a being of extraordinary measure. And you are growing and you are evolving in such a way that they're very afraid. And you can see how very afraid they are. You know, when you go over, now that's Wisconsin, right? And so, you know, our history is just, it's not what, what we're told. And we look to Mohenjo-Daro, and we look to Harappa culture, and we look, gosh, you know, we look at gobekli Tepli, and, and we, we see that, you know, they, they have totally hidden what's happened in the past and rewritten it so many times. The key thing, though, to, to know and take from this is it's always been because of one culture destroying another, and then that gets destroyed by the next one that pops up, and then that one gets destroyed by the next. It's constant warfare. It's constant. It never stops. It's, it's all about division and, and hatred, and it's all about... You know, all the things that divide us in, instead of the things that unite us. And it goes back to the Tower of Babel. And again, everybody was united at this time. And they were making a city that would reach to the heavens. And so the, the mighty ones. And again, you got to recognize that there's nothing in the Bible that is unique. In reality, it all comes from older stories. The Sumerian stories, again, a couple thousand years older by far, in, in many cases, much, much older than even that. You know, what we're talking about is, again, uh, the mighty ones, the Anunnaki, uh, those giants that came from the sky. And they said, look, the people are getting along. They're actually being constructive. They're working together. We can't have this. So they came down and they scattered people and confused the language. Now what they're talking about there is they're taking away the ability of people to communicate telepathically using their pineal gland and then when we read in Deuteronomy 32 8 it talks about the division of people with each one of the Anunnaki each one of the sons of the gods each taking a tribe to be its own tribe to be its own plaything, like you know playing games of chess or risk you guys remember risk or stratego you remember those old games well that's kind of like how they view this whole planet it's just you know it's just a resource and it's also something that they view as a pastime look to the roman emperors throwing people to the lions the christians get thrown to the lions then the christians burn their witches and then the, uh, you know, Muslims go and attack Christians, and then Christians attack Muslims, and then Christians attack India. You know, again, it's a never-ending cycle. As long as we get caught up in their hatred, that is their number one tool. Divide through differences in beliefs and religions and politics. Keep them fighting each other. They won't notice what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Really keep that in mind when we're moving through this time and we're starting to realize that belief systems can be very vast and very wide and 
I think a lot of people are really opening up more and they're starting to explore more because they understand that everything that's been written has been taken from an older text, a much, much older text. So they're starting to open their eyes. But really, now's a good time to get curious about other cultures, other belief systems. I mean, this world is still a big smorgasbord full of interesting information as long as our hearts remain open you know it's not that my god is better than your god and and da 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 that's just <laughs> it's 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 childish really if you look at it that way my god's the only god that can exist no no life does not have to be that way we can all be very open and we can appreciate the other cultures we can appreciate other other belief systems boy that brings you so much color when you allow these different aspects of other beings inside of your life it really makes it so purposeful your your human journey here absolutely so again you see each sumerian city state had its own specific patreon deity and and the bible tells us abraham came from ur and then when he uh, sees the burning well actually when moses sees the burning bush that's in the sin i sinai sinai Sin, you know, is also the Sumerian uh, moon god. The moon was brought here by who? Well, there is people that remain, uh, people that remember the legends of a time before the moon. Uh, and in multiple cultures, we, we do find that in some of the original inhabitants of the Italian peninsula. They remember before the moon was here. And then we see in African stories, there's African tribes that say, the moon was brought here by two warring gods that were brothers. Man, it sounds like Enlil and Enki. You can't make this stuff up. Each Sumerian city-state has its own patron deity, the god of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, again, you know, each one has its own patron deity. That's not the creator of the universe. These are the Anunnaki. The, these are what we would call fallen Pleiadians that fell to the Draconian. AI system and are now nothing but slaves themselves enslaving humanity. That's right. So, you know, being able to break away from our belief system enough to understand that we've kind of been we've kind of been fooled. I think that's where things need to be. We need to understand what we're up against because if you don't recognize what we're up against then we're not really going to have a chance and there needs to be more numbers there's got to be more of us and i can feel it i can feel the growth out there but we're not there yet we just have to keep going absolutely and whether it's the greek mythology or the sumerian mythology when there's plagues and calamities it's because the gods brought it on mankind just like today they saw those funny little clouds back then we see them today Technology has always been here. As always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Much love. God bless, because there is a creator, but it's not the Anunnaki. Namaste. Namaste.